welcome to another video. Thank you very much for joining me again. We are in Norfolk in a very unassuming little cul-de-sac. So we are here to see Mike of MJY Pattern Makers. Chris over at East Coast Castings speaks very, very highly of these guys. Proper old school, traditional guy. I've been doing it for years, literally longer than I've been alive. And uh, they are making the pattern for the main body of the Ranala. So this is it. Chris every now and then has been sending me a little sneaky picture here and there of what's been going on, a little idea of what's happened. I'm hoping that we can catch it at a point where it's not completely finished because by then it's painted red and you don't really see anything. I've learned an awful lot about pattern making over this, over this during this experience. Um, and so I can fully appreciate how talented these guys are. We are so close. As Soon as this pattern is done, we're gonna cast the first one. So we are very, very close. How's it going? Are you Mike? Yeah. Good to see you. Doing? Nice to see you. Hello there. Thanks for having us over. You're welcome. This is it. Yeah, that's the thing. I hope that's what you wanted. Uh, it looks the right shape. Yes. <laughs> How's it been? That's good. Yeah. That's gone well. Very well. Yeah, Amazing. Not too bad a job at all. Is it not? No. I was worried it's going to be really complicated. No, 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 no. no. So is it, is it quite an unusual job to get given a casting and to sort of reverse engineer almost making no, a pattern? I, or? Think, I think we prefer that. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Because you can actually see the thing in front of you and you, we, as long as you can see the insides and all, you can do the job quite comfortably. So we'd have to just measure that job in standard rule yeah. and turn it into contraction rule. To allow for the, for the shrink. shrinkage of the metal. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise you would be what, get given a drawing. Yeah. How are these 3D drawings there? Okay? Been helpful at that, least? Yes, they've been helpful, yes. Yeah? Yeah. I guess it's nice to have yes. both, belt and braces. Both things is good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Perfect. Especially on the older stuff. It's an amazing workshop you've got. So day to day you're here. Short yeah. commute from your house. Yeah. Well, these are my two boys. Hello, guys. You okay? Hello. Nice to meet you both. So you've achieved something by teaching them. I was going to say, you've roped them into the family business now? Yeah. yeah. Aw. How long have you been doing this then? Uh, since I was 15 and I'm 72, so I was 57, no. However, since you're 15? Yeah. yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So, served my time at Lawrence and Scott's in Norwich. What was, was that? Six a... year apprenticeship. Then I went to Dove Company in Deer and I worked on cars. And then I ended up starting up on my own here and I've been here about 34 years. Wow, good. I've got pattern making the whole time. Yeah, yeah, that's all I've ever done. That is incredible. Making. As a 15 year old kid, what, why pattern making? How did that come about? Someone showed me a model of something and they told me that was a pattern. And that was, a, believe it or not, that was a hacksaw handle. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Like yeah. And that was, I actually made it at school. And that was one of the first jobs I ever done. Like in DT, in, in tech class? Yeah. In, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the first jobs I ever done. Then I went, I got my job at 15, which is a, a lovely time to leave school. Yeah, I see. Very, you know. And, uh, Straight into work. And I still love it after all them years. Do you really? Yeah. Good. Every day you wake up, it's like, yeah, excited to come here. I can see why. You've got a beautiful workshop. You can tell this is a labour of love, yeah. really. Yeah. So when Chris called you and said about this job, was that, did you well, put the I phone did, down or was it? <laughs> when he first said, I didn't realise that was going to be this size. Oh no, really? Yeah, you see a drawing. <laughs> You've got no idea. There you go, especially a model drawn these days. Yeah. Because they haven't got sizes on them. No, it could be any, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a six year apprenticeship yeah. to train as a yeah. pattern maker. Yeah. But you know what, after me naively coming into this completely blind, never, even spoken to a pattern maker before, never been to a foundry. Now I've started to learn a bit more about it all. I can actually completely understand. You've got to be so much more than just a carpenter or a chippy. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. No, it's, you, want, you have to know yeah. about metals as well, shrinkages and, yeah. and how metal yeah. acts. Yeah. So did these two had no choice then? They had to come along. I think you're doing a good thing, keeping these old 
skills. Well, I would say a couple of the youngest ones are both now, Dan and Pat, mate. These two? Yeah. Yeah. I guess you guys must have grown up with Dad in the shed all the time. So as a kid, it must yeah, have been. Yeah, that was like that, yeah. Yeah. It was like that, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was on my own, so I had to do it. And in them days, you had to, if you didn't earn, if you didn't work, you didn't earn. Yeah, so it was. Yeah, and if the jobs are there, you, yeah, you yeah. just make it happen as, as you can. No, exactly. <laughs> I mean, what we're doing with the Ranana project, we're trying to trying to do things as traditionally as as possible, as it would have been made in the thirties, because there, when these were made originally, there would have been a pattern. This would have e oh, yeah, existed yeah. Oh, somewhere. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And from seeing this, I feel like it would have looked like that. Is that's no different at all. But in the old days, they didn't have plywood. So you've done it with all wood. Okay, we'd all been timber. That's, but that's, the, that's I mean, the only difference. That's timber. There's yeah. no, barely any plywood in there. But the techniques, like even that, the, the cylindrical part of the front, that top cradle bit is turned. Yeah, that's turned, yeah. So you can put the set of the draft angles yeah. in yeah. every angle. Yeah. And that'll all be finished by hand. Yeah. As it's, yeah. It looks beautiful. That one of, one of the things we do on jobs like that, we set them out you know, on, a, on a big sheet of ploy. We actually draw what we want to make. Okay. So you set it out on the on on the ploy. Sort of two dimensions. Which we call our set out. Yeah, two dimensions. Yeah. And then you work off that. And that's how we do it. He must just have a completely. That's a back to front, inside out. Your, I was going to say your brain must yeah. be thinking completely inside out to inside everyone else because. Yeah. Uh, Hollows and negative well, we spaces. Make a, we you're... make a lump to make a hole. Yeah. And a hole to make a to lump. To make a lump. Yeah, exactly. And then you put the lump in the hole. That's why I couldn't get my head around this. When I made the, we made the first pattern, I had the, the cradle had the holes through. I made them as holes, and it's taken me this long to kind of realise a hole needs to be a, a solid, and it's all it's all yeah, the uh, other way of thinking. Yeah, it's back to front. It's, it's all, all back to front. front. Yeah. Bearing in mind, I was going to try and make this myself in my workshop. Standing the original cast iron thing there, how do you start with that? Like, where do you start? I guess it's like because I know this, this is a split pattern, it's in um, half, but like, like the first pen mark of like, how you've got to you've got to arrive at a dating point where all the dimensional dimensionals are come from. So, the bottom line, the base of that is where you take all your sizes, you do the horizontal dating and a vertical dating, and you work out. From that. So you start at the so bottom. The, the horizontal, the vertical date would be on the centre line of that pool. Okay. And that's how you do it. You start working out from the centre lines. So you went to Chris at the foundry where the wheel, where the original cast yeah. iron is, and you just just measure off literally with hand tools. Yeah. Just measuring yeah, measuring yeah, up from the bottom. I mean, Mikey went over there and uh, he just got a tape and went over it and. Quick to blame Mikey, I see. <laughs> That's it, when the measurements are wrong later. <laughs> but you can just look at something and you just know the, the journey, the thought process yeah. and the and the way you where you need to start. You've got to make the arches out of segments. The straight bits are straightforward. But you've got to make it so it fits together strongly. Because it's going to be bashed around. Yeah. Chris's guys are going to be heavy handed with it. Yeah. 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 It's just part of the casting yes. process. Oh yeah. It must be quite nice working with your two boys. It's similar in my workshop when I was working with people that I've worked with for years. You almost don't need to, everyone knows the process and you almost don't need to explain it 10 different times because I guess now they're so experienced, you all just know that thought process of what needs to be done and you can all just get on and yeah, yeah. it must be nice. Yeah, that is nice, very nice. Oh. I've got to ask you about the foundry paint. Chris is very secretive about it. What is, is it just, it's not just normal paint? No. If you paint it red, that means that's going to be the metal, right? Okay. If you paint it black, that's the print where the core's going to go in. So there's a little language you've got yes. with the foundry. It, in the old days, we used to paint where that's machine, that's yellow. Ah. And where there's a loose piece, what we call a loose piece on a little dovetail, that used to be painted green. Oh my goodness. And the, the patterns used to look lovely. Like these. The little tabs for the cores to see. They would be black. Yeah. We still do all that. So I tell, they know then there's going to be something got to go in there. That So they know there needs to be a core because yes. there's black bits. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. These leather fillets, John Byrne Casting sent me these. I did not know these existed. Apparently this is our solution for the internal 
radius yeah. on the pattern. How on earth does this work then? Because I can't quite understand. We first of all had to soak it in water. Then we wring it out. And this is just a strip of leather. Yeah. With the back and it's sort of chamfered off. Yeah. Once I've wrung out. Get the glue on it. This is just wood glue. Yeah, PVA. Yeah. Use my Smith. finger as a tool. <laughs> Normally sort of filler most of the time. No, it's just it's quicker yeah, and if easier. You want it looking sort of like an older looking casting. But traditionally well, there's a lot to do, you use leather filler. I guess you've got a continue the benefits of that I suppose is you've got a continuous radius, the yeah. same shape all the way around. Yeah. You can so you place it for where you want it. So at the moment that transition is just 90, that's yeah. 90 degrees. Never fill a ball. And then just I love it. rub it on. And then you just clean Bingo. it off. That is so it's satisfying, isn't it? And then you've got a perfect radius. Yep. Done. You can bend it with your fingers. Oh, it's really quite and flexible. It yeah. Flexes, so you, you start already. Yeah. But if you've got a really tight one, you can cut that up, so then that goes round the corner a little bit easier. And on the inside, you cut these. Pull that one out. Then that, you've got your V there. That yeah. would, As you pull it round, yeah, they meet back up. Meet up to each other. And you would do that all the way around there, yeah. around this curve. Corners like that, I guess for the, being a pattern for the sand, you would avoid having any sort of sharp corners. Yeah. Everything would be yeah. rounded yeah, off. On, the, on that one, we do the upright first, and then this bottom one will feed round, and you'll create a little bit of radius with the upright then. Okay, and blend everything. Yeah. We blend it into each other easy, nice yeah. and smooth. That's fascinating. I love this tool. Is this? A, there, there's just that is actually a legit board, yeah. tool. Yeah. You've not made that. Yeah, I suppose you could make them. Yeah, but it's a leather. That's a leather applicable well, fillet ball. Yeah, fillet ball. I guess I can understand why we're using leather fillets because that's what they did originally. Yeah. That's what the original ran on a machine has got in, inside that eye beam. It's almost it is like a one radius almost blends into the next yeah. one. It's all nice and smooth. But if you wanted a square sharp corner, can you you could do that or? You can, it depends on how thick the metal is. The thick the metal is more likely going to pull the cast and once it's start to um, harden. So as the metal, pour, as the metal yeah. shrinks down, it yeah. doesn't like sharp corners. So that's why this stuff exists. Yeah. To try and to blend that transition between two corners. Yeah. The, the critical thing is obviously the alignment of those, but obviously, but that being 90 degrees, that and that, because that wheel has to be sit 90 I know I've got a certain amount of movement with my setting them in lead but that's got to be 90 degrees to that quite quite critically yeah should be. it's a big old thing yeah 750 kilos done so you haven't made one side finish one side then start on the other you sort of have to make both Together, especially the joint, two bits of ply, put on top, literally you know, together. Yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. first time, actually, that's the first time I've Is it really? It looks like a ranala. That's it. I spent so many hours sitting staring at the one in my workshop. Honestly, I better double check. Yeah, yeah made you nervous now. So that's <laughs> How much bigger with a contraction? Eighth of a foot. Eighth of an inch to a foot. Yeah. So that's nearly six foot. So you're nearly an inch. So it's only, you're only not even an inch. And you do that on every dimension or do you, do you kind of know? Every dimension, we normally do it. You do? You don't sort of think, oh, the metal's going to shrink I mean, less nil, here. Yeah. Steel is a quarter of a foot. Lead is about... There's all these rules on there. What? Three eighths of the foot. Yes, yeah, I only I only learned about those rulers yeah. recently. Like I've, I'm, I'm a bit terrified that how many old rulers I've bought in the boot sales as an old ruler and not actually realised it's got that one over eighty in the corner or something. It's yeah. just like using that as an actual ruler. No, I completely trust you guys. I really do. I think it's going to be bang on. Oh, it's awesome, isn't it? Thank you very yeah. much. I really, really appreciate it. It's 
beautiful thing. Once it's, yeah. made, once it's made of metal, it'll be, <laughs> I can't yeah. wait to see that. Almost there. What do you think, another week or two? Or? Yeah, I should think so, yeah. Yep, yeah. We're literally nearly done, yeah. One side's pretty much there. Rounded off the edge, put the lever in. I think, yeah, yeah. a good week, I should think. You've got yeah. the core box, was it? Oh, of course, the cores, yeah. But hopefully within a couple of weeks, it'll be ready and I'll be, yeah. I'll start nagging Chris to get ready with his casting. Yeah, book it in. So hopefully in a few weeks, we might be about at the foundry with it. Yes. Amazing. Thank you all so much. It looks Thank absolutely you. beautiful. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Really lovely to meet you. Thank you so much. You're all right. Nice one. Cheers. Thank you. See you later. See you later. See you, bye. Mike was such a legend. What a guy. Been doing it all of his life. Since he was 15. Beautiful workshop in the back of his garden. He's been there for 35 years. Just making patterns his whole life. And to see that he's, he's trained up his two sons and they're both now super talented doing the same thing as their dad. I just think... I'm so jealous. It's just, it's just awesome. Keeping the uh, tradition, the old tradition of pattern making still alive. A little workshop, nothing massive, but just super, super talented guys doing incredible work. They showed me some things in there that we couldn't show on camera because they're sort of protected and they're, they're not allowed to talk about them and I couldn't show them on the channel. But I got to have a little look around and he had a pile of old bits he's done and that he's working on. Engine cases and all of these passageways and all these intricate things that are inside a 3D shape and all have to fit together. I guess that's a lifetime of experience for you. What an experience. I feel very, very fortunate, very lucky to have spent the time in their workshop with the guys uh, and very, very lucky that they are making the Randall pattern. And that all those traditional techniques with the, the leather fillets and the leather fillet sm it's like smushing tool, it's just, it's beautiful stuff. Really, really beautiful. So very lucky, very glad. Give us a wave. Hello Dan, East Coast Casting. I thought it'd be rude to come all this way and not say hello to Chris. I've bought this, which is a piece of the lead that I melted when I took out the inserts from the casting. This has been a bit of a, um, it's a bit of a, a myth. Would you say it's a myth or would it be like a wives tale? A fallacy. A fallacy, well wh whatever the long word would be. I don't think that's lead. Um, it just looks too shiny. It, the way it melted didn't really seem like lead and it's very brittle. So anyone out there that knows more than me, put in the comments, leave me a comment if you know what it's made of or what you think it might be made of. But Chris has got a fancy machine here, whether he's, well, he's also got a very clever brain. Maybe he'll just know from looking at it, but he might be able to scan it with his little zapping machine to tell us what metal this is. I'm, honestly, I'm so, I said to them, I'm so, great, I'm so grateful that you put me onto them and I'm so pleased they're doing it. You yeah. can't beat it, you can't beat it. There's literally the guy there with his two sons, done it all of his life, sitting there, the leather fillets they had there, the lettering, everything about it was just like, it just feels right, you know? It's just, I'm over the moon, yeah. Back in the workshop after a very, very long drive. Now, please excuse the Christmas jumper and the background. Don't look too much. We are working on something, a secret project. You'll never guess what it is. What a brilliant day. Absolutely awesome meeting Mike and his two sons uh, in their not beautiful little workshop. Very, very talented bunch. Things are getting quite exciting now. The pattern is very nearly done. It's looking like a work of art. It's so nice. At some point in the next few weeks, we're gonna be back up at the foundry casting the very first Ranala. I cannot wait. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.